with all the news from WTCN-TV's expanded news-gathering facility. WTCN-TV, Channel 11. This is Channel 11 News at 10. That's the worst thing I've ever seen in 24 years of doing this job. We can't get through town. We're not let anything go through. There's houses down, trees down, tops of buildings off the courthouse. Half the top has gone off of that. It's, uh, it's a mess. At 4.45, it moved right through the town of Humphrey. You okay? All the smells good. Upstairs is clear. It's quite, quite devastating to look at it. Um, I'm hoping, you know, we can rebuild. Our downtown is um, in very bad disrepair. Oh my God. <laughs> A stormy Sunday afternoon brought mayhem to St. Peter. You see the clouds turning and turning, and pretty soon you could see it coming down. At least one funnel cloud hop skipped and tore its way through the town of 10,000. You could just see this, the, the black clouds swirling, and then all of a sudden you could hear the, the roar of the train. Only part of Mary Finnesgaard's home is still standing. I used to have a porch there in the roof, and it was just all sided. Yeah. Her neighborhood is an intersection of disaster. We don't get many down here in the valley. And I always said if we ever got one down here, it was going to be bad. And it is. Anybody here? Police go door to door looking for survivors. What about this house? No, they don't know yet. They don't know yet? Yeah, it's just car. That must have came up. He said he's you think he's in there? You OK? And as darkness quickly fell, people gathered what they could. Oh, you mouse. Tonight, they counted their blessings. Thank God they've got the warning systems now, because we were all down there safe and sound. And wondered what's next. I guess tomorrow we'll tell. It's tough. We've been here 20 years. All you can do is go in there and get some medical supplies, okay, uh, clothing. We'll get to you. And if the house is safe. Okay. If the loss of their houses wasn't bad enough, <sighs> this morning the residents of Comfrey found themselves shut out of their own town. Hey, don't we get to go in? This is what Leon Hillesheim and the others left behind when they were ordered out of Comfrey last night. A main street that looked like a bomb had been dropped. The corner bar, the drugstore, the fire department, and the steeple that once stood high atop Faith Lutheran Church now speared in the ground, top down, on the front lawn. You waving him around me. Leon and the others wanted in badly. There's enough mass confusion. I know there, there is. You're trying to cause more. I'm not but it would have to be on the terms of their elected officials. Closing and uh, medication is what they're basically talking about, and that's all. And uh, they want you out within an hour. My brother from Maple Grove was talking to them on the phone when the sirens went off. Diane Deutsch drove down from the Twin Cities to help her parents collect a few belongings. He's 87 and mom's 80. And we've, they've been on their farm for all their life and we just moved them here seven months ago. It was terrible to <laughs> see. Art Kratz and his wife Ann rode out the storm in That's their apartment true. but lost nearly everything. That grandfather's clock up there my brother made for my dad, mom, out of the walnut wood from their farm. These are the things that will be hardest to replace. It was our 80th birthday last week. <laughs> Something with which Comfrey we is still Christmas. coming to grips. It's okay. It's okay. It's all right, Dad. We'll get you a nice place again. Okay. And I seen it coming, and my nephew was with me, and we were buckled in, and I just grabbed his hand, and I said, we got to start praying. Dave Harry and his 13-year-old nephew were driving home when suddenly they were caught in the tornado and their vehicle began rolling over and over. 
it just flipped me and rolled me this way and it landed back on its wheels luckily and I kicked the door open again and then we um, ended up I ended up over here and two by fours were just hitting me in the head and, and uh, that little tree right there I ended up crawling behind that my nephew was right over there about 20 yards away and I got him over to the tree and just huddled over him held on to the tree Harry, who was covered with bruises and scrapes, hobbled to the tree that he clung to for dear life. I mean, that little tree saved our life. I was holding on, and he came over, and I just laid over the top of him. And I had an Explorer sitting here and an S10 pickup, and the S10 pickup's right over against the trees, and we figured the Explorer went through the corner of Hunt's house there and ended up right behind their house. Ty Brown is certainly thankful he wasn't in one of his vehicles when they were catapulted some 200 yards across the street and behind a neighbor's house. Brown had run to the basement. And I just got to the bottom when I was in the front there, and I looked up, and the eaves were going, and then that soffit started leaving, and I knew we were in trouble then, and it sounded like eight freight trains running over the house. Not anything I want. I know, honey, but I'm just saying, let's... Okay. Oh, one earring that you gave me. Oh, there it is. What? Oh my God. Your penis. You got it. On the campus at Gustavus Adolphus, the good King Gustav himself lies face down in the mud perhaps it's just as well. Truth is, there's not much here he'd want to see, not a scene left unmarred by this storm. And despite the best of intentions, laborers here know there will be no quick fixes. All the money in the world cannot put this place back together again. How big of a job is this? I couldn't begin to guess. Couldn't begin. Reality is, this is how you fix these problems, even with the tens of millions of dollars that'll be spent here. You pick up the pieces one at a time. Engineers are left with flashlights in the dark. It's overwhelming, really. We, you know, when we came down, we didn't expect uh, this amount of damage, so it's, it's hard to, uh, it's just so extensive. It's, it's, we we're just trying to get a handle on it right now. There is hope in the destruction, unique symbols in this unique place rising from the wreckage everywhere, promising happier times again. It's okay, it's okay. All right, Dad. We'll get you a nice place again. I'm Paul Majors. And I'm Belinda Jensen. Sunday is supposed to be a day of rest, but it was a restless sky that fell on southern Minnesota in March of 1998. Four counties would be declared disaster areas. Farmers, anxious to begin spring planting, found themselves clinging to the earth for their very survival. Churches, preparing for the Christian Holy Week, were battered and sometimes devoured by a series of powerful tornadoes that broke hearts and history. The villain in this story is a supercell thunderstorm, a natural powerhouse that dropped at least seven tornadoes, some of them a mile or more wide onto defenseless towns like Jeffers, Comfrey, St. Peter, and Lee Center. Two Minnesotans, one child, one older man were killed by the twisters, but certainly the loss of life could have been much worse. This is the story of a storm that destroyed hundreds of homes, farms, and apartments. It devastated the campus of Gustavus Adolphus College. Physical damage is in the hundreds of millions of dollars. But in the end, it's the spirit of the people of Southern Minnesota that rose above the Black Sunday Wall Club. It's the thousands of volunteers who swarmed into the disaster areas to patch the wounds and begin the healing. These are their stories of heartbreak and finally, 
I used to deliver papers up and down the street. It was so beautiful. They're all big trees. That's the biggest thing. The trees are all gone. And so is much of North 3rd Street. Who's the next house? The place brothers Adam and I Luke Ellison grew up. Yeah, Franny Anderson's the next house. They did all right. Down the corner is the Faust, and they're going to lose their house. As for the Ellifsons, our garage was the worst by far. Their newest addition was swept away. It got blown across the street. And now it's on the move again. I seen our shop back that I gave my dad for Christmas. I think he used it once. A mound of debris that continues to grow. 17-year-old Luke adds his share and relies on an old friend for help. When I was little, I hauled my drums all the way over to my friend's house, like three blocks away in that wagon. Now I'm hauling dirt and rubble from five blocks down, probably the same house I brought my drums to. It's a trying time for Adam and Luke, but in their mother's eyes, this tornado has turned her boys into men. I think they've grown up a lot. There's, a, there's the frame up there, the roof frame. Two men trying to feel at home again. It doesn't look like home. It feels like home, but doesn't look like it. Supercell thunderstorm. These thunderstorms can stay on the ground for 50, 60, 70 miles and they can uh, really cause a problem. They really build upon themselves. Supercell thunderstorms are really the king of thunderstorms. They are the most organized of any storm. They last for hours. They can cover up to 300 miles before they start to die out. The updrafts can be anywhere between 60 to 100 miles per hour. So that really explains a lot of the hail that we uh, had reported. Let's take a look at the storm path. It started at about 435 in the southwest corner of the state in Adrian. As it moves to the north, it moved through Comfrey at around 445. And then an F3 now with winds up to 206 miles per hour from the superstorm moved through St. Peter. Then an F2 through La Center and then finally in Lonsdale. They're not sure exactly what the wind speeds there were, but the, possibly an F1 or F2. Two hectic days after a tornado took aim at his house, Leroy Sticka is still adding up his losses. I don't know what hit this here, but it stuck a one by six right through the tire. But inside the family's gutted garage is one that goes in the found column. Hey, buddy, should we go get some birds? Huh? Should we get some birds? <laughs> Lightfoot the Labrador was chained to his doghouse Sunday night when his owners had to scramble for cover. When the storm finally disappeared, so had Lightfoot. Be honest, I started to cry. His house was gone, he was gone, and we were calling for him and looking for him, and this was at 11 o'clock at night, and here he came in the, out of the dark, and he was just a wobbling. Leroy tracked down the doghouse yesterday, 300 yards from where it was originally anchored. His owners figure the twister sucked up Lightfoot and his house, spun them around, and then spit them back out. He brought his house home yesterday, he sniffed it, and he backed away from it the first couple of times, but then he slowly went into it. <laughs> the guy fully figured, well, he don't want to go for another ride. The football press box at Gustavus Adolphus College was brand new last year. They'll need another one before next season begins. The tennis courts are in even worse shape. Twisters uprooted and snapped thousands of trees on campus. Strong winds shattered 75% of the windows. New glass alone won't be enough for the hundreds of cars towed to a lot they're calling the graveyard. At a real cemetery across the street, meanwhile, Mother Nature showed no respect for the dead. We're working to establish a temporary clinic. We're hoping by next week to have a, a trailer in the parking lot here. A trailer in the parking lot because the tornado obliterated the dental center where Greg Ingalls used to work. Having that old town flavor and feeling, um, you know, you wonder is that going to be recaptured ever again, at least in our lifetime. The devastation is overwhelming, almost too much to comprehend even after seeing it with your own eyes. Downtown businesses piled in a heap, nothing where a garage used to be blue tarps replacing rooftops as far as the eye can see. A community's sense of security shaken, literally, to its very foundation. Basically, the house all got lifted up and shifted. Tom Brown and his wife Dawn bought this old Victorian home just two months ago. The tornado struck before they even had a chance to move in. I was just physically sick. I, my body was just 
ill. It's a house, but the memories are there, you know, and you can't replace those things. Next door, and, uh, Kathy Strand is mourning the loss of her childhood home, the house where her mother still lives. We cry on and off all day long, you know. You find certain things that make you cry, and then you find things that make you laugh. And uh, basically, you always go back to the fact that we're all okay. In the midst of chaos, the morning paper is a welcome sign that life is slowly getting back to normal, even if much of the news is still bad. There's some places like my grandpa's house who didn't get any damage at all, just a little garbage in the yard. And then there are other houses that are just completely toppled over. Nothing will ever be the same. The whole town will never be the same. It's true. Nothing will ever be the same around here. Tornadoes have a powerful way of doing that to a community. It looks like hell in the heart of Brown County farm country. Yeah, I'd burn it up. On the Drexler farm, they're burning family history pages, ripped up by Sunday's storm. You know, a building doesn't look right when it's laying all on the ground. It's supposed to be standing up. John Drexler's barn must go. You worked on this farm all the time with your dad and stuff, and that's the part that's kind of hard. He wouldn't let anybody know, you know, behind closed doors, <laughs> if we can find any. You know, then he, then he cries. The Drexler's home, a half dozen buildings, three generations of work destroyed in seconds by a tornado. We waited for the train, but we never heard it. It was just a mass of noise. Right there, see? Yeah. Neighbor Roy Yanni captured yeah. Sunday's monster on tape. The videotape doesn't do the twister justice, just like videotapes of damage doesn't do the damage justice. Well, you can see how it ran up this direction. Sheriff Larry Peterson tours the mile-wide twister's 36-mile path. Today, smoke twisters dot the county. I never want to see it again. We just don't know where to start, you know. It's just a, just a mess. At the Drexler's battered place, friends and family help. The flames help, too. If it lays around too long, you know, if it lays here all summer, you know, it just makes it feel that much worse every time you see it. They're burning Brown County's hell. Here, farm equipment survived, and the Drexlers plan to stay planted in their heaven. This is your home, you know, you're not gonna leave, you know. This is our life, this is where we are. As the volunteers get closer to the disaster site, the scenery begins to change. Look at that. So does the weather, it's cold and damp in St. Peter, and the mood changes. Now the real work begins. The assignment is simple, help with cleanup. Volunteers span out across the city. St. Peter resident Dave Andros appreciates the help. People like roaming around looking for stuff to do and then they grab the, whatever they have to do and they start doing it. And it's really helpful because otherwise for one person to do it all, even on your own property alone, mm -hmm. it just can be overwhelming. Okay, students, uh, welcome back. Welcome back to the first day of school since the tornado. Well, the Nicollet School was undamaged. The tornado had knocked out the electricity. May I have your attention, please? Students had helped with the cleanup individually the last three days. Now, seventh and eighth graders would work in Mankato. High school crews would go to St. Peter, and 40 seniors would help in Comfrey. Help has been tremendous around here. Dan Amston was talking about trained volunteers like heavy equipment operators and firefighters. Sunday night we had all kinds of help even already. Dan Amston felt grateful for the firefighters who were searching the ruins of Memorial Hall for purses and such. Fifty or sixty partygoers had abandoned them at a wedding reception interrupted by the tornado. Other volunteers just cleaned up. A group of 15 came from Granite Falls wanting to give back. Take the flood last year over this. It's a mess. I've never seen a mess like this before, ever. Some of them got pretty wet down there, and they're just happy that people come to help us, so now we're going to pay them back. We've been out here since uh, 10.30. Four hours into it, and Ryan Piper is still going strong. Get whatever tools are available and get the job done. Ryan's just one of hundreds of kids who've come to St. Peter simply because it's the right thing to do. We got out of classes if we wanted to come help. So, got excused for that, so why not? <laughs> Today, students are learning out of doors a lesson about giving. And there's a lot of giving going on in St. Peter. Yeah, there's a lot of people here, so it's hard to find people 
who haven't had help already. Rebe Hofferbert and her grandson needed the help. And you can imagine what, what a job that would be if we had to do that alone. And without even asking, worker bees landed on her lawn. And they're just troopers. They just go at it and don't give up, smiling, laughing. It's, it's just overwhelming. You don't know how you're going to thank them. But the thanks are understood. I mean, it's just what's down inside. You know, it's something nice to do for somebody else. It's, I mean, it's a lot of fun just to get out here and kind of get dirty. It's unreal. Well, that, just what that wind can do for damage. For three straight days now, Mark Shipman has been working his way through the rubble. Above and beyond the call of duty. When a tornado hits. The heck of a mess. A bulldozer operator couldn't have a more important engagement. In fact, the tornado ranks as one of the biggest events in Mark's life. Yeah, nothing this exciting has ever happened around here. This afternoon, he cleared room in his schedule. I'm Mark. I, Mark. I, Mark, take you, Brandy, to be my wife. For another. Sickness and in health. Mark no more than stepped off his bulldozer, and he was standing at the altar. Until we were parted by death. With his fiance Brandy. Why should one act of God, they reasoned, cancel another. A very lucky guy. Strange thing is, when they called him lucky, they weren't even thinking about Mark's wedding. I have been lucky his whole life. Mark and Brandy were working on a pickup truck inside this shed Sunday afternoon and left five minutes before the tornado made it a pancake. See that, that bend that's all crunched up over there was laying on top of this. The honeymoon will have to wait till the mess is cleared up. Their car is wrecked anyway, but with so much of southern Minnesota put asunder, it was good to see some putting together. Go for it. <laughs> As soon as I saw the Gustavus on the top of the hill without any trees and the chapel steeple down, it, it was it was devastating. <laughs> oh, it's okay. It can be fixed. When you've only heard about how Mother Nature has slapped the campus you love. It was, it was just so frustrating all week, just hearing bits and pieces. The first glimpse of Gustavus can shatter your hope. No trees. I mean, they kept not telling us there's no trees. But we didn't actually, we didn't know what that meant, you know. We didn't, we didn't know what that looked like. You can't imagine it. And I, now that we've seen it, you don't want to believe it. For 21 Golden Gusties, it is particularly ironic. We were um, building houses for Habitat for Humanity. We have, um, Gustavus does this every spring break. We have, there's over 200 people from campus who go out. There was trips that went all over the country. They spent their spring break making homes in Connecticut while the tornado unmade their own homes. They built something else on their trip, relationships born of tragedy, nurtured by common work and determination that can last a lifetime. We had that all week long. We had that, that kind of bonding, and we didn't want that to end at all. So they sang, and they prayed, and finally, they cheered. How are you, and where were you when this happened? At the restaurant. The you kids were. were at home, but... Oh, thanks be to God, you're all okay. You're all Sister Surgot Thomason's mission has not changed, just the location. But now where are you staying? Well, we're going to stay with friends tonight, and then I think we'll go by the mobile home tomorrow. Sister Thomason's home church, St. Peter, was devastated by last Sunday's tornado. Now she and the rest of the congregation are worshiping at First Lutheran. Innocence was beaten up on last Sunday. St. Peter Catholic Church was left with two huge gaping holes and the lawn is littered with bricks and broken glass. Father Bean says a parishioner found a page from the Bible buried in the debris. The troubles of my heart have enlarged. Bring me out of my distresses. Definitely for us. The morning after the storm, First Lutheran Church pastor Elizabeth Yates drove by St. Peter. It made me cry. Such devastation. But out of it comes resurrection because we've got this wonderful spirit of people expressing love and fellowship. First Lutheran and St. Peter congregations are sharing the same worship hall and the same emotions that come after living through Sunday's storm. 
Dan Wagshed's family and home were untouched by the tornado. You feel guilty to have everything you have. And There's a few people that say they might leave town, but uh, they, they've missed the, the spirit of St. Peter. A spirit deeply rooted in faith. And to heal the wounds of our community. Bringing together two churches that otherwise would have only shared the same city is but one powerful result of the storm. Oh, thanks be to God, you're all okay. You're all this is so wonderful that we can share your church with you. It's all got to come out because we're going to level the building. Well, it was a table saw. Seven days of picking up the pieces for John Makala. My spring cleaning will probably extend into fall. Just seen it earlier when it was really messy. It looks clean now. A week ago, my biggest worry was, you know, putting down some lawn seed and fertilizer. This Sunday, there's just cleaning. Last Sunday, St. Peter was turned upside down. It was a day just like today. But the sun disappeared last Sunday. Right around 5.30, 5.25, I was up in the kitchen basting the turkey. A black wall ripped the Makalas. I had a barn here and a silo there, and there was a chicken coop there. Just the beginning of the Twister's assault on St. Peter. We're trying to clean up. For the Makalas and others, there was a home to return to a week ago. No, we had to live in another place. Now we have to live in another place, yeah. It'll be all right, though. Tough for two-year-olds and grown-ups. When am I going to quit having a headache? Oh, everything flew away, huh? Last Sunday, everything changed for the Makalas. 5.30, right to the hour, isn't it, John? Yeah. Right to the hour. Turkey's still in the kitchen from a week ago. It's a Sunday around here they'll never forget. I kept waiting to uh, wake up. You know, that had never happened, but uh, it's been a week. I haven't woke up yet, so hope I do soon. And I always said if we ever got one down here, it was going to be bad. And it is. You think he's in there? You okay? Where are you at? The property losses are clearly tragic, but those we can replace. We have piles of tin in our yard, but we're okay. That's how they count. We're not quite sure. Where to start? We've got some friends coming over, and so we'll just dig through the rubbish, I guess, and see what we can find. We just moved in last part of February, just unpacking the last of the boxes last night before it hit. Now we can repack what we can salvage up. Look down there and see the people. Everybody's working, and everybody's helping out. I'm no meteorologist, but I'm going to have to say she was an F4. She got what she wanted. She was after somebody. Floor started to flutter. My daughter started to elevate off the ground here. I grabbed her here like this. I threw my boy down in the corner, pulled my daughter in and covered him, and proceeded to get nailed in the back by all kinds of debris. I feel very lucky. I, I'm glad. I mean, I, I don't want to be planning. I didn't want to be planning a funeral today and picking up my house. Yeah, we're very lucky. We can replace this, but I never replace my kids. Everybody's safe. Missing one dog. He's their 17-year-old. He's kind of a legend in the family. I'm afraid he's going to be sorely missed. I'm hoping to find him today. Maybe some other memories. But you take a good look around you, there's one memory that ain't going to go away. That's for sure. That's for sure.